How's it going, people? For today's video, I'm going to show you all the best Save the World missions to do to farm Battle Pass XP quickly after yesterday's update. But before we take a look at the new Save the World cap and XP values for each mission, there were quite a few bugs that we got with yesterday's update that I wanted to go over first. So the first bug we're going to take a look at is the trap durability bug that occurs in people's SSDs and endurance. Basically any form of trap durability bonus, whether you get it from your hero loadout, survivor squads, isn't going to be applied when loading into a mission with pre-existing traps like SSDs and endurance. If you were to place a new trap during the mission, it'll include those bonuses you get. But if you already placed the trap down, then it's not going to include those bonuses. Epic Games is aware of this bug because they acknowledged it on Reddit. They replied saying thanks. They'll be passing this along to the dev team. So for those of you who have done SSDs and endurance, you may have noticed your traps aren't working like they normally do. Basically, when you load in, none of your traps are at full durability. They'll have like maybe a fraction of the total amount of uses they're supposed to have but like i said epic is aware of this bug and i do expect them to fix it eventually i've also seen a couple of reports where people stated that their entire endurances were empty all of their resources traps were gone so you may want to avoid loading into your ssd until they fix that issue and this is a bug we've seen before it's even happened to me but just wanted to give y'all a heads up there were a couple of people who have said that their entire ssds got cleared out when they loaded into it so you may want to try to avoid loading into your ssd if possible until they fix this issue there was also a bug with the eye of the brainstorm quest line apparently wildlife doesn't spawn in as much as it used to and that includes zombie chickens and for one of the brainstorm quests you'll have to kill i think 54 zombie chickens and as of right now it's going to be really difficult to complete that challenge because they don't spawn in as much as they used to there have been some people who were able to find a couple zombie chickens here and there but yeah as of right now it's going to be very difficult to complete that challenge so you may want to hold off on doing that brainstorm quest line until they fix the zombie chicken spawn rate also apparently there's a bug with melee weapons that'll cause the melee weapon perks to transfer over to ranged weapons so here's what my nocturnal fire rate normally looks like and for whatever reason when we equip this baron with three movement speeds and attack speed. For whatever reason, it increases the fire rate on our Nocturno. I did load in and tried to replicate this bug, but I wasn't able to do myself. But according to multiple people, they have experienced this bug since the update. So that may be something else you wanna look out for. Someone also reported that the melee weapons can buff your minigun as well. And apparently there was another bug in regards to the Jack Skellington skin, uh, they sent out this tweet a few hours ago saying that they disabled the Jack Skellington outfit and saved the world while they investigate a stability issue. As you can tell, when we tried to equip it and save the world, they wouldn't even let us see the skin. It just goes automatically to whatever hero you have equipped. When I tried to equip Jack Skellington's back bling, it really bugged out. So yeah, as of right now, you won't be able to wear Jack Skellington and save the world, but it looks like they are aware of it and they will fix it eventually. And this isn't really a bug, but there was also some news in regards to the next Venture Zone. According to this tweet, it looks like they're going to replace the Flannel Falls Venture Season with a new Winter's Venture Season. And they're going to replace the old Mild Meadows with Flannel Falls. So it looks like they're going to get rid of Mild Meadows, replace that with Flannel Falls, and... Hopefully next Venture Season, we'll see the new Winter Venture Season. So yeah, it looks like there's a good chance we could get some new content soon. And again, that new Venture Season starts November 22nd. But yeah, that's all the new content I could find with yesterday's update. If you all came across any bugs that I didn't mention, be sure to let us know in the comments below. Save the World reached a new all-time high in the current player count with 40,000 players today. Yesterday we reached 35,000 and today we reached almost 40,000. So apparently the OG map not only brought back VR players, but it also brought back a lot of Save the World players, which is another reason I wanted to do this video. So next thing I want to go over is how to farm Battle Pass XP quickly and Save the World. But first, I want to quickly explain how Battle Pass XP works and Save the World. So for those who don't know, it doesn't matter what the power level of the mission is, whether it's a power level 140 fight the storm or a power level 3 fight the storm, 
Either way, you're going to get the same amount of Battle Pass XP, so the difficulty doesn't matter. Another way you can earn more Battle Pass XP with each mission is by completing your bonus objectives. So in this example, we have to find the Atlas and place it down within five and a half minutes. And if we're able to do that, we'll get even more Battle Pass XP once we complete the mission. So since we was able to do that, we should get more Battle Pass XP compared to if we didn't. Also, if we complete that speed run objective, we'll get even more Battle Pass XP. So you'll want to keep an eye out on those bonus objectives. Another way you can get extra Battle Pass XP with each mission is by fully exploring the map. And the way you do that is just by uncovering all of the gray areas. And the last way you can increase the amount of Battle Pass XP you get from each mission is by getting at least a gold badge in combat, building, and utility. Obviously, to increase your combat, all you have to do is just kill Hus. So killing wildlife also increases your combat. To increase your building, all you have to do is build. And upgrading your building pieces also increases your building. And there's a few different ways you can increase your utility. So right now we're at one. One way you can increase it is by destroying objects around the map. Destroying that stop sign gave us a one utility point. Searching items will also increase your utility. So searching that bush gave us three utility points. And the amount of points you get sort of depends on what you destroy. So if we destroy this car over here, for example, that'll give us five utility points. Crafting weapons can also boost your utility. So crafting a deatomizer increased it from 16 to 510. So in order to get gold in utility, all you really need to do is just craft two weapons and that should boost you up to the gold badge. And in order to get gold in each category, we needed 780 combat, 650 building, and we needed about 970 utility. So getting gold in each category can give you extra battle pass XP as well. And the last thing I wanna go over are the changes they made when it comes to battle pass XP and save the world. The new cap is 368,200. And keep in mind, there's only a total of seven pages and 70 levels. And since it takes 80,000 XP per level, you should be able to get four and a half levels every day from just playing Save the World. And keep in mind, that doesn't include XP you get from quests. So uh, you can earn even more than 368,000 if you were to complete, let's say for example, your daily quest. You see you get 22,000 from each of these. So if I were to complete both of these, technically I could get 400,000 XP from Save the World today. So yeah, that cap only applies to XP you get from missions, not from quests. So it should take you roughly 15 days, 15 or 16 days to complete the battle pass if you only played Save the World. And again, we're going to have a total of 30 days for this battle pass. It ends on December 2nd. So you'll have more than enough time to complete the battle pass by just playing Save the World. So before I explain which missions are the best, first thing I want to do is show the new battle pass XP values for each type of mission. And shout out to Archer for providing this with this information. But when it comes to endurance, you can actually reach the cap if you complete wave 30. So if you want to reach the cap every day and you have your endurance built, all you have to do is just run one endurance. Uh, when it comes to defense missions, category four gives 46,000, ride the lightning gives 31,000, retrieve the data gives 33,000, deliver the bomb gives 41,000, 43,000 for evac, 33 for repair the shelter, and 54,000 for refuel. When it comes to attack missions, eliminate and collect gives you 30,000, rescue the survivors gives you 22, Destroy the encampments gives you 32. Build the radar gives you 52,000 if you build every tower. The Storm King gives you 15,000 and resupply gives you 30,000 XP. And when it comes to dungeons, the crypts gives you 32,000. Inferno gives 17. The grotto gives 21. The labyrinth gives almost 26,000. And the lab gives 43,000. So these are the new amounts you can expect for each type of mission. And when it comes to the best missions, Obviously, if you have your endurance built, that's probably going to be the easiest way to reach the cap. Normally, I'd say if you get your endurance built, go ahead and farm that once every day. But with people reporting that their SSDs are being wiped, you may want to avoid that until Epic fixes that issue. It's sort of up to you. 
but normally endurance would be a great way to farm battle pass xp i think retrieve the data and ride the lightning are going to be the two best regular missions to do obviously we're not going to get frost knight until november the 22nd but usually frost knight is also a really good way to farm battle pass xp but the overall fastest way to farm battle pass xp and save the world is by completing dungeons and to be specific the crypts inferno and the lab dungeons are going to be the best ways to farm battle pass xp and save the world because the crypts and inferno can be done within like two to three minutes i'd say probably five minutes on average and the lab can be completed within about five minutes if you go as quickly as possible so those are going to be the fastest ways to farm battle pass xp and save the world and that sums up all the tips I have for farming Battle Pass XP and save the world. Anyways, before I go, I did want to give a huge shout out to everybody who's been using Creator Code A1. And just want to say thank you for your support. Anyways, I hope y'all have a wonderful day and thanks for watching.